Now the 1920s, the conflict of cultures. Now I had mentioned before that there was two groups of people, the conservatives and the progressives. And let me give you some specific examples of this. Now the conservatives, they would hold on to what's called traditional beliefs. And if you could put that in a sense, sentence, it would be something like, if it was good enough for my parents and my grandparents, it's good enough for me. Many of these conservatives were white Christian, uh, living in rural areas, and they held on to these traditional ideas. They didn't look at change as a good thing. On the other hand, you had progressives. Now, progressives were what we call cosmopolitan urbanites, and I know that's a mouthful, but cosmopolitan urbanites, uh, people who liked quite a bit of diversity, they tended to live in cities, and these people generally welcomed new ideas and ways of living. Now, let me give you some specific uh, examples or of, of these groups. Conservatives, many of these people were, were what we called fundamentalists. It's the idea that, again, very conservative, did not want change, very literal, very literal in their beliefs. Uh, the idea of traditional morality, what did morality mean? And we don't change the idea of what morality means today. Uh, what it meant uh, 50, 10, 50, 100 years ago is what it means today. The idea of ethnic sameness, it's so that the people that, that were around you would look very much like you, and that was something that they wanted to see. They were concerned about this idea of growing consumerism, about wanting to buy and have new, the, the latest and greatest things, and also concerned about secularism, the idea of teachings that were outside of religious texts, specifically the Bible, and uh, the lessening role of organized religion in mainstream life. Now, progressives, on the other hand, they generally did embrace new technology and new ideas. They liked the idea and embraced new scientific discoveries. The idea of social diversity was one that they liked, that the idea of not having sameness, but having people with different, uh, different experiences and all contributing to society. And finally, embracing modern cultural values. And again, that's very vague, but as we get through this presentation, you'll see the ideas of what this modern cultural values would be. But in, there we go. Like I said, there's going to be a clash of cultures, and it's going to be primarily between conservatives and progressives. Now, keep in mind, there is a tremendous class of culture that is happening even today. In fact, when we get done with this presentation, I'm going to have you do a project that's going to, I'm going to have you pick a specific social issue where conservatives and progressives are clashing today on a specific social value. But we'll get to that. After you learn, we'll get to that project. Okay, in talking about these divisions, it might be helpful to actually have a visual, something that you can see. This is a pretty good, I think it's a pretty good example of visual. It's a conservative or traditional visual, and this is a very famous painting. It's called American Gothic by Grant Wood. And like we had said before, uh, this would be a, a traditional or a conservative outlook. Uh, you can see ethni ethnically, uh, they're the same. Very whiteness, probably Christian, you can see that. Uh, in the background of the of the house, the window actually looks like a church window, minus the stained glass, but but that frame. Uh, living in a rural area, and the idea, the traditional, if it worked for me, if it it works for me because it works for my parents and it worked for my grandparents. On the other hand, you would have progressive or modern. These would be people that would live in the city, and specifically, I I chose a picture of the flappers, and we're going to talk specifically about these girls and who they were and their outlook on life. But they were considered very, very radical, very radical, and definitely a clash of cultures in the 1920s.